a while back, Ruben, Josh and I went to do the Rafa Cross Prestige up in Manchester. Basically, it's a pretty chilled out cyclocross sportive. You start as a team, you end as a team, and there's a couple of checkpoints to get to in, what, 70k? Yeah, nice chilled out ride. Most people obviously are going to do it on cross bikes, but we wanted to try it a little bit different, didn't we? So Josh was on a traditional cross bike, a specialised crux. Joe was on his S-Works Epic hardtail, and I was on a converted single speed hardtail mountain bike. So the basic premise was that it was going to be a cross bike versus a hardtail versus a single speed hardtail mountain bike. Josh, you started on the most traditional bike, a traditional cross bike. How did you get on? Well, the tyres were probably the main issue. I used my standard 33mm Challenge Baby Limus clinches, um, and to say they were small was probably an understatement. 11 kilometres in, one puncher, and one failing bike already. Morale. <laughs> I think I had three punctures, which is an improvement on last year's four punctures. <laughs> but other than that, the bike was pretty good, apart from another minor mechanical with my uh, shoe cleat. What's happened? <laughs> but notice, noticeably slower on like the descents, wasn't yeah. it? So there was yeah a, uh, a pack horse trail I think towards the north of yeah. Bolton, which is basically big stones laid into the ground, and I was struggling to go any faster than five or ten kilometres an hour. I was nursing the bike over, which was a bit of puncture paranoia yeah. from earlier in the day, but I could have easily done with 40, 45 mil tyres. So yeah, you didn't find it wasn't the the bike that there was the issue. It's just no. your just your tyres, really. Yeah, for sure. The bike was perfect, adequate gearing for everything that was thrown at us. Do you think your pressure was right, or do you think you kind of messed up a bit with the pressure at the start? Yeah, I did mess up with the pressure, which was definitely a contributing factor to the first puncture. Sort of cobbled parve section just coming out of Manchester, and I left my tyres at about 30 psi, which was only a little bit more than what I'd use in a normal cross race on grass. Hit the first section of cobbles and my rear wheel went within about 100 metres. Yeah, I thought I'd start as I meant to go on really, <laughs> with punctures, but. And then you were on your sort of a new new bike you've got, mm -hmm. which is a single speed Canyon conversion. Yeah, it's like a, a new old bike for me. Dumped the Drelia cassette uh, and thought I might have got it fixed, but um, lots of problems with my tensioner. So what's, what's happened? Well, I'm just getting loads of chain slip for some reason. I don't know if it's just the grime in the mud, but yeah, I don't know. We'll bumble along, shall we bumble along for a bit and wait till we get to a hilly bit? Yeah, pretty, pretty frustrating when every couple of K, you know, you, you just jolt forward like that up every little climb. and um, So every climb we hit, me and Josh would ride off and you could just hear this in the background, this like, kung, kung, kung. Fo fo followed by some swears. <laughs> We were kind of sympathetic, but I feel a bit guilty now because maybe we weren't, we weren't that sympathetic about it. it. It got better, to be fair. Like I say, the middle section of the ride was was better because it was slightly drier, but still not great. How's your morale now? Better. I like. I don't know why it sort of sorted itself out. Way you made it. If you want to find out more about my converted single speed, then click on the link in the video description. So those are our bikes, but Joe was on one of the most Instagram compatible bikes around at the moment. So how, did, how was it? Yeah, it's my new long-term bike, which is a specialized S-Works Epic Hardtail. So it's a very Gucci bike. It's also very, very purple, but obviously for such an expensive high-end bike, really light, really fast. And for, for this Cross Prestige, I didn't have any problems with it really. No punctures. All the issues I did have were after the ride when my bottom bracket froze solid and the cables to my gears were a bit knackered as well because often these kind of rides and races, you've done a big long four hour ride covered in like industrial muck and grit and then you, uh, you don't have a chance to wash your bike until you get home that night and within that time, yeah, there's just a lot of grime and salt and all the sort of horrible things get into those areas and yeah, knacky your bottom bracket. The same thing happened to me last year. I rode mm. a Marina hardtail last year and the same thing happened. It's not great, especially on a brand new bike, but 
There you go, press fits, rubbish. So, <laughs> need a decent external bottom bracket. So yeah, we had a great time at the event. We all had a few issues, but who do you think chose the best bike? Uh, Joe? I'm gonna say Joe as well. But I think like in the spirit of things, because it was a cross bike, maybe Josh did it properly. Yeah. That, that sounds good to me. I definitely felt like I chose the right bike because I had no problems with it. But then again, I was on a, a brand new super bike, whereas Josh was on your Specialized is a kind of fairly, it's not value is it, but it's, it's a kind of entry level cross yeah, bike. Yeah, it's mid, mid range, the, the second in the crux lineup. Yeah. Here, so it's an aluminium frame, 105 spec. Some of that terrain, I did not envy you riding a rigid fork. I'm very glad. Uh, I had suspension for the cross prestige. Yes, yeah, so I think it's, it's an important thing to mention here and something we've all done a lot of gravel events, especially Ruben, the more and more we do, mm. the more we find that perhaps a cross bike, especially for the UK, isn't the correct type of bike really, is it? It's not the correct, but it's definitely not the most efficient, like, or the most comfortable. I think, yeah, just a mountain bike, a hardtail mountain bike, you can almost do everything on it, um, not to the extremes of, you know, like road gearing or you know the speeds that road bikes can get up to but you're going to have the comfort the the big tires the grip and the suspension yeah because quite often we find and again in these kind of gravel adventure cyclocross style sportive and races is that the terrain is more demanding than what a cyclocross bike can really handle especially at the cross the street your your bike on the descent yeah that pack course trail was pretty brutal really. I was, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it was, we just nursed it the whole way down. Um, there was actually a cross country running event going on at the same time and I just stuck behind a runner because <laughs> there was no point overtaking him. <laughs> so I still managed to crash yeah, mm, two or three times on that descent. So which... Sadly we didn't get that on video, but yeah. Shame, yeah. Shame. But if, if, you are, if you do have a rigid aluminium bike, go for the biggest tyres you can get because you're not going to regret it. So if we do it next year, which hopefully we will, so we really enjoy doing the Rafa Cross Prestiges, what type of bike will you choose and will you change or will you just change your setup a little bit? Um, I'll probably stick with my cross bike uh, and just put bigger tyres on it. Whilst I envied both of you really on the day, uh, I think with wider tyres the cross bike would be fine and there's enough fast bits or at least gravelly, hard pack, mud, that the cross bike mm. was superior to your bikes on, I would say. Especially with my tiny little gearing, wazzing away with my little legs. Uh, but I would, if I can get my gearing problem sorted, then I'd probably do it again on a single speed, because it's quite fun. I'd imagine you'd be back on your hardtail. Probably, yeah, I like my knees, so I won't be doing it on a single speed. After seeing you grinding up some of the climbs at like probably 30 RPM yeah, doing yeah. leg presses. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd just do it on a hardtail again. If I was spending my own money, it definitely wouldn't be on a really expensive hardtail. I'd be just as happy on a kind of entry level hardtail, just as long as it had big tires and gears and suspension, I'd be happy. It kind of sums us up though, cyclocrosser, weird biker, cross country. So it seems that we'd all take the same bike if we do it next year, which goes to show that there isn't necessarily a best bike for this kind of event. It's maybe just what you enjoy riding, what you like to ride, what you're going to have fun on, but maybe tweaking the setup is the way to go. Mm -hmm.